most people in America are familiar with what their rights are and aren't underneath the house of the Lord, right? After all, we are born into this world and we have a unique soul. We are talked about this and told about this through many television shows that is usually what people are using to educate their families, educate their children, and educate what they believe. Because how you invest your time, where you put your children most of the time, how you spend your free time with your children is what creates their future life. If you are a family member who is a parent of some kind and you are spending your time reading how to be a good parent and how to produce a healthy and productive and performing society member, then I applaud you. If you have never once picked up a parenting book and you're not exactly pleased with how your child has turned out, that is on you, isn't it? Because you failed to take the time to handle a child when they were becoming wayward, when they were becoming obstinate, when they were becoming difficult. Now it is true that our society is somewhat moral still and we do have rules and regulations in schools that kind of help keep good kids who are already really in their souls good and decent within line. But we also have a bunch of children who are underperforming because they have not been taught the rules of life. They have not been shown the future possibilities of employment sometimes because they can't even articulate half the time what their parents do for a living. If you have a child that is over age 12, they ought to know how to articulate what you as a parent do to earn your living, to provide for your family the shelter that you have above the roof of their head that keeps them safe from the elephants, elephants, sorry, the elements and safe from the weather all the different types of conditions and it's easy to talk to a 12 year old child about that as talk to me about the weather let's discuss the weather year round what's it like and how do we stay safe from that weather and you go through that process and therefore you have a discussion on shelter and then you talk to them about the reality of sustenance and sustenance is the food and the nourishment and the nutrition that a parent chooses for their child it's amazing how people who have impoverished thinking will shop at a discount store but won't think how many healthy foods are available for them and more at the same price that they purchase their junk food. And that's a shame. But in life, sometimes we need to have a demonstrator talking about healthy foods outside a facility that offers inexpensive foods, thank God, to people who are in struggle, like me, like you, like any family in America, because we know from a career builder study that was done a few years ago that basically some 78% plus of Americans, and probably more now since the time of COVID, are living paycheck to paycheck. So once we establish that, it brings us to the third S of concepts of adulthood, which is service. And what does a person do for a living? And what kind of a life is it producing for them? And how do we get to the life that we long for? How do we make sure our children end up earning equal to their parents' livelihood or more and most parents like me wanted their child to go off to find prosperity so while I had a very wayward child because of the upbringing of that child that was not my full-on responsibility until a very very early age in which I got involved that openly we still have people in society people of immorality who infiltrate our family who interfere with our parenting and who provide our child experiences that might not be the right thing. Who our children associate with, who they play with, who they talk with online, who they speak with on the phone, is our responsibility to a point. But it is our responsibility to handle the early stages of childhood, that 0 to 5, 0 to 10, to 10, with the precious gift of the Lord that God has given you. Not with the disciplinarian, till of the hun attitudes that we often see immorally in a community. You see, when a parent wants to do a good job and they're in a car driving to a store, the parent starts to talk to the child about the shopping list of the things that we are intentionally going to buy for the family and why. And as they keep the child thinking and talking about those items, they're reminding them of why we need those things. And that there might be other things at the store that are exciting and interesting, but we're not going to buy them because they're not in our budget. And then you talk to the child about what a budget is. And usually a child by age five or six can kind of conceptualize that in that one. But at the same time, then you're going to tell that child about how they're going to walk in the parking lot, how if they're a certain age, they have to hold mom and dad's hand because of the reason that people fly through parking lots. They often don't see children 
who are walking unattended, and they can be harmed in some way accidentally or immorally intentionally by a bad person in society. And that starts to establish in the child's mouth that I'm going to hold mom's hand until we get to the store and maybe even hold it in the store or help mom to put things in the car. And you're going to give that child the preparation for the behavior and the activity that's going to go on while you're shopping. So we have to pay for everything that we purchase and so on and so forth. And that conversation can begin presuming that you've done some early childhood development with your child at two and three, but really a three-year-old can start to sort of conceptualize some of that. And they're not going to be perfect at it, but, you know, it's easy to use a loving voice to bring a child back into the activity of the hands of, no, no, we need to buy this today for our family. Why don't you help me pick it up? As long as it's not breakable, of course. And that's the reality of it. So in life, we can talk about child rearing in really simple terms. The child rearing is teaching a child about the three S's of life, of shelter, sustenance, and service. And service is what we're engaging children to do at about age two and three when they're big enough to walk and they're old enough to talk a little and they openly understand that there's service being provided to them within the home by their mom and dad. And they're old enough and big enough to pick up their toys and help mom and dad do that and they're old enough and big enough to help kind of put their clothes on or fold them or put them away or help with laundry and do little easy age-appropriate things. Now why am I talking about this today? It's pretty straightforward that there's a lot of people who've learned about my channel, but I don't always get to see the numbers because of what I've talked about previously in terms of video production and video uses and video publication and video dissemination, that sometimes we're embedding our videos into channels that we never see the views on because it's not directly off of a YouTube or Vimeo or other type of, uh, what do they call it, Instagram or um, what's the new thing? Uh, that's out there, I forget what it's called, but anyway, that does video, and even Facebook allows some video now, thank God for that, right, because our whole life is lived online, not entirely, but our future professional life is impact impacted by social media, because most companies today actually utilize social media to review people, to socialize with people, to find employees, and openly, for the most part, it can be productive and healthy for American society. And when I talk about these things, I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. But what I am asking you as a parent is, are you preparing your child to be able to live without you in the future, or God forbid, in an emergency situation? And most parents are not. They're not aware of the dangers in the world because they're so busy in their cell phones that they don't know about them, they don't see about them, and they don't care about them. And there is some beauty of the naivety and um, the innocence of childhood. But at the same time, by the time they reach age 15 and 16, they have to be made aware of stranger dangers a little bit more. They have to be made more aware of the audio files that can be played in the subliminal tracks of our lives. And they also have to be aware of the fact that there's whisper modes in phones. And they have to be aware that someone who's a hacker can turn a phone on and have a video recording literally while they're there. And they have to be told about chemistries and alcohol and drugs and things to avoid to keep them in good standing with the Lord. And openly, they have to be told about things that can be put in food and why we always take care of our own beverages and we don't leave them unattended on the table and whatnot. Because the liars of America like to do bad things. And the liars of America are the people who lie to themselves about their right. Their right is, I have the right to do anything I want to because I feel like it. So what you learn is that they're still functioning in the area of a five-year-old and that their parenting did not teach them that's not true. So in life, we have most of the time to speak the truth, that it takes a village to raise a, raise a healthy, productive, performing, and successful child. But the versions of success are different in every family. For some families, it's a race car. For other families, it's another cow. For other families, it's a home. For other families, it's a quality apartment complex. For other families, it's a swimming pool in the backyard. Who knows what you're teaching your child? But basically, the things that you talk about are you have to be important. That most important of any shelter in a home is the roof and the wall and keeping the critters and bugs out. Anything else in a home really can be lived without, because we know that from African communities, from villages overseas that we often go to in Hades to try to help to cure from disease. But here's the reality. If their society was trying to raise themselves higher, based on the technological world in which we live, we might not have as many challenges with COVID that we currently have to give. 
Now, what I'm talking about is that God is raging. And God is raging at communities, and God is raging at you and me, and God is raging saying, what about me? Why haven't you found a faith that's right for you? Why haven't you listened to the Lord above in everything you do? Why are you trying to conduct your life without ever considering whether or not God is within you or around you? And while God and Jesus and angels are always around you, have you taught your children how to find a version of faith that speaks to their soul in some unique way so that they recognize the difference between the light of the Lord in people and the dark of Satan within other people so that they are safe from strangers and safe from friends and safe, quote unquote, and safe from society and safe until their natural end. You see, in life, what we know is there's a lot of accidental death, there's a lot of accidental drownings, there's a lot of accidents because parents didn't think about the age and stage of a child and what is and isn't possible, what is and isn't appropriate, what a child can and can't function and understand in their minds, and that is the greatest sin of all time. For 60 plus years, at least, we have been studying the raising of a thinking, productive child. So do not bother to go have sex and fuck somebody if you're not mature enough to recognize your responsibility to protect yourself from disease, protect yourself from pregnancies early to premature in your life, and to protect yourself by expecting that society expect you to raise a moral, free-thinking, productive, performing individual for our society of the future world. You see, it only takes a few nations to say, oh, look at the weakness of America, let's go after that. And at this time, we have a lot of war in racism and ethnocentricity and reverse racism and hatred flowing through our society. Because most people have gotten themselves out of any kind of, any form of lighted house of the Lord. There's many denominations, and there's many types of religions, there's many types of spiritualities that are of the light. And then we have the Harry Potter world in which we learn and are reminded again by amazing authors, those ones impoverish yourself, about the light and the dark of the world.